Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with FX Market Insight for Tuesday, the 24th of September. All right, now we're just at the uh, very early stages of the Asian session and uh, markets are being pretty settled to start the week, to be honest, it's, and it's a good thing. This is actually almost coming back to normal market conditions where these core market drivers, the geopolitical events, have caused so much disruption to the natural flow of the currencies, it's, it's quite odd to not have them chiming in. So at the moment, they've gone a little bit quiet. Uh, we are waiting for some major Brexit updates, but generally speaking, this is getting closer to normal markets. We just lack clear direction from the central banks. So to me, we've got normal market conditions and uh, calm markets, and they are better to trade in, generally. Right? You can feel more comfortable placing orders. But what we do have still is, if you look at the dollar pairs here on the analysis, right, we still lack clear direction. What we're getting is the dollar is sort of edging high, but it hasn't broken out of the hourly or daily trends. We've got pretty neutral sentiment there from the Fed as well. Dollar yen, well, it's just ticking down a little bit on the hourlies, but generally speaking, on the longer time frames, it's just trading sideways. Dollar CAD continues to uh, sort of have these little false breaks to the top side, but nothing consistent, and Dollar Swiss doesn't really want to budge either. Uh, what we are seeing is a little bit more weakness coming into Euro. Now, it looks like the market wants to be sure, but they're just not confident because they've been flushed out so many times on that. There's no major levels down here. If anything, it looks like 110, the figure, okay, the psychological big round number is creating a little bit of traction, but that's about it. Now, sterling, as I said, we're, we're waiting for a few updates. Hourlies, it's just edging lower now down through that short-term support on the daily, still going up. Uh, the Aussie, well, this is the two the two Antipodeans, right? So the Aussies, it's got a very weird structure at the moment on the alleys. It is sort of drifting lower, like Euro, but it doesn't really have any levels anywhere. And it's very hard to work out where you would be getting in on the downside. And at the moment, uh, the, the battler, okay, the flightless bird, the Kiwi, is just edging up through a short-term resistance level. And this actually is pretty good because when I see, but it's clear that, for a second, when I see a currency pair that has, um, you know, say downward bias from the central bank, it's got uh, overall long-term structure, which is down. This means it's coming back to a potential sell zone, which is actually really appealing to me, right? This is where we bring it back towards where the uh, opportunities are. Now, before I go through the upcoming data, let's just have a quick look at the uh, majors on the um, charts here. Um, as you can see, the Aussie has just been drifting lower, but if I widen that out, you'd see it's still within recent ranges, but it just lacks the push, right? No clear push. If anything, last week's uh, unemployment result has put a little bit of weakness into the currency. Um, if anything, here's that short-term trend line on um, Kiwi. It's just trickled above and taking out a few stops. To me, though, getting short back towards 63.80 looks like a good thing, but I'll come into that a bit more when we look at the upcoming data because tomorrow we do have the RBNZ interest rate decision and statement. That's going to be critical for the next leg on the uh, Kiwi and we'll have to see how that plays out. Now, dollar yen, we had a nice cruisy little short-term uh, uptrend and that's now just tweaking lower. That's why I've got it going down on the alleys. Um, and this is it. Most of the action is just on these alleys, just changing shape. Now, Euro, if you look at the highs and lows here of recent trading, it's still within those ranges, but you know what? It has broken down through this very short-term support line and it's now sort of edging lower. As I said, it doesn't look like it's that convincing. It goes down sort of 20 points and everyone scrambles back and gets their positions back. And uh, Sterling, well, Brexit, there's a, there's a Supreme Court um, uh, case at the moment, um, a, a ruling around whether uh, the PM, Boris Johnson, has either misled the Queen Elizabeth over his reasons for suspending parliament. Um, I mean, it's getting really messy, right? But uh, so Sterling, anyway, it is just breaking down the alleys. You, ca you, you can't deny that. And here, once again, is uh, dollar CAD breaking to the top side. Now, it's had about three false breaks on the top side. To me, it wants to be sitting around 132.55, 60, but it keeps shooting up on so, some of the weak, uh, weak data, Canadian data. So it's, it's really not going anywhere. And oil has really settled down after that initial attack on the Saudi oil fields. And that's where we are with the majors, right? So you come back and you think, well, 
and once again, with the MyFX Trading Hub, what we're trying to do is you summarize that analysis uh, into this sort of framework so you can see where the best opportunities are. Still, there's not huge shape there, but that's all we've got to work with. Now, you channel that in with what is coming out uh, today or this week, and this is where you can really start to get things to connect. So just looking at the, uh, up today's upcoming major events. Now, Japan was on holidays yesterday. You'd expect the Japanese traders to get very involved today. Uh, we do have the Bank of Japan Governor Kuroda speaking. Um, more importantly, I think we've already got a little bit of weakness in some of the, the um, Eurozone numbers. So German IFO numbers will be watched very closely today. Further weakness, and we should see Euro drift lower further. If they bounce, well, then we'll probably see this thing back up towards 110, 20, 30 again. Uh, the first major sort of release out of the US, which is good, Tuesday, consumer confidence numbers. This is definitely uh, something to keep a very close eye on. And you've got uh, the RBA governor there speaking. I think he's at the same uh, event Corota speaking at. But uh, that's all we've got for today. And don't forget, for those traders who are sort of gagging for something a bit bigger, well, we do have the RBNZ interest rate decision tomorrow, right? So you've got to wait for that to come up and we'll do the analysis around that. So German numbers, I'd say the best of it, the German IFO numbers and the consumer confidence where we may get some momentum. Uh, what you need to do is, is focus on the pairs where that will impact. Obviously, Euro is going to be uh, a major opportunity if it's weak and the US numbers are strong. Well, then we should see Euro turn down once again. All right, guys, that's it from me. Have a good trade day. All the very best. Cheerio.